is a higher current ratio always better? No, not necessarily. While a high current ratio, say over three, would indicate the company can cover its current liabilities three times with its current assets, it might mean that they're not using debt to acquire more assets so they can generate more value for the shareholders. A current ratio that is too high can indicate an inefficient use of debt to generate future value and revenues. So, a current ratio that is too low is a red flag indicating problems, but a current ratio that is too high is a red flag too. It's just sending us a different message. In the end, a current ratio that is in line with the industry average or slightly higher is generally considered acceptable. Remember, it's all about comparing to benchmarks. We would also want to see the trend in the current ratio within the company either being stable over time or increasing slightly. A current ratio that is lower than the industry average may indicate a higher risk of default when a company can't pay their short-term debts when they come due. Similarly, if a company has a very high current ratio compared to the industry average, it indicates that management may not be using their assets efficiently. So am I saying that a current ratio of less than one is always bad? <sighs> no. A company with a current ratio less than one does not, in many cases, have assets on hand to meet its short-term debts if they were all due at once. But short-term liabilities are not all due at once. Let's check out Orange. It's very unlikely that Orange's wages payable are due on the exact same day as the income taxes payable, and the current portion of long-term debt will be paid over the upcoming 12 months. Unearned revenue will never be paid out in cash. It's going to be paid out in goods or services. So you can see that short-term liabilities are never all going to be due at once. The current ratio at any one time is just a snapshot of one second in time. So although it can give us an idea of the company's ability to pay its short-term debts when they come due, it is not a complete representation of the company's liquidity. Let's do a different example to show this. Say we have ABC Inc. Let's assume their current ratio is $3.04 to 1. For every $1 of current liabilities, they have just over $3 of assets. But ABC's accounts receivable are very old. Customers pay very slowly. Because the current ratio only measures total current assets to total liabilities, this fact would be totally hidden. The same would be true if the company had very high inventory. The current ratio may look great, but if that inventory can't be sold, then the company may be headed for trouble, even though their current ratio looks fantastic. In order to properly assess the current ratio, we have to look at the quality of the company's current assets. Now, let's take the opposite, a current ratio of less than one. Hayden Inc. has a current ratio of 72 cents to 1. For every $1 of debt, they only have 72 cents of current assets. So, do you think Hayden is headed for trouble? Well, maybe not. First, it may be standard in Hayden's industry. So, the first thing to do is to check the current ratio against the industry average. Next, different situations can affect the current ratio in a financially healthy company. For example, a normal monthly cycle for the company's collections of accounts receivable and payment of accounts payable may lead to a low current ratio when accounts payable are paid before accounts receivable are collected. Calculating the current ratio at just one point in time could indicate the company can't cover all of its current debts, but it doesn't mean it won't be able to cover the debts once the payments are received. Additionally, some companies, such as Walmart and Costco, have been able to negotiate long payment terms with their suppliers. Walmart and Costco don't offer credit terms to their customers, so customers pay them immediately. But they take a long time to pay their suppliers. That means that their accounts payable would be high and their accounts receivable would be zero. It also means that their current ratio may be less than one. If the company can also minimize their inventory levels by not stockpiling inventory, so their inventory values would be low, 
then their current assets would be even smaller. When compared to their high accounts payable balances, this would result in a very low current ratio. For example, Walmart's current ratio in January 2019 was 80 cents to 1. So, what do we learn from this? The current ratio is a useful measure of a company's short-term liquidity. However, it must be assessed over time. What is the trend for this company? And it must be compared to the industry average. What is everyone else's current ratio in this industry? In our next video, we're going to explore the limitations of the current ratio.